Hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed. It's a podcast powered by Cars Guide and we are ready to rip in a car stuff that has caught our eye this week. I'm James and with me is Richard. Hello. And Matt. G'day. Uh, this week we're investigating a glorious hot hatch return from a sleeping giant that's rousing from its slumber. Richard. Yeah. Richard. We'll visit the garage and discuss three of its occupants um, from this week. Oh. And we'll catch up with a billionaire that loves his mommy in this week's <laughs> Musquatch. So stay with us. Yeah. We've had some feedback and that's Good. terrific. So from yeah. comments at carsguide.com.au, mm-hmm. um, Stephen M. Cal, now I'm guessing M. Cal is Mook something, but I couldn't get the rest of the name. Okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, Dear Tools, love the podcast. Thank you. Found it September 2019 and have now listened to all of them. Oh, my God. Now, this is podcast number 120. <laughs> Not even I've This person has matchsticks under their eyelids. <laughs> uh, all of them. Thank you. And they are funny. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good job. <laughs> I listened to State of the Union and was genuinely scared by Musquatch, as I think the guy is trying to create Skynet, a.k.a. Terminator. This is terrifying. Have a good day and keep up the dad jokes as I have young kids and some of them are really good. <laughs> some of them. Uh, I love M. Cow. Smell, sm, cow. Sem Cow. Sem Cow. Sem something. That's, cow. Now, it's either that his kids are really good, some yeah. of his kids are really good, or uh, some of the dad jokes are I think are really the good. jokes. I think, I think he's jokes. talking about the jokes. I reckon he'd have a few good dad jokes too. Oh, mm. we, we might be able to, um, yeah. you know, institute some Sem, kind of swap. Yeah. Send us some. Send, send us some. some of your best jokes. Yeah, best dad jokes. Now, YouTube. Terry Toucan, ah. Richard, I think this is directed at you. Brother, your new haircut. Give what? me a twinge. Much better. You can. You still got it with short hair, bro. Uh, what? <laughs> Do I get it out again? No, don't. Did, I don't know if that's about you. Oh, oh, I thought it was about Chester. Maybe it's about Chester. I thought oh, it was about now Chester. Now I've got the hair well, out for no reason. Put that cap back on. It doesn't go back on now. It's oh. <laughs> now, DeCook also <laughs> says, I've seen the Puma, because we talked about the Ford Puma, Puma. Yep. Yep. Um, live and it's extremely practical. Mm-hmm. You might be able to fit a washing machine uh, in it with seats down because we spoke about that. That's apparently its claim to fame. No, that's the Eco Sport. Oh, the Eco Sport. Yeah. Eco Sport. Yeah. Eco Sport. Yeah. And I said it might be a very rudimentary washing machine, i.e., a mm. tub with a wooden washboard or, or a small person. person. Yeah, yeah yes. a small person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, you might be able to fit a washing machine with seats down, but more importantly for me, you can put a wetsuit into the underfloor storage box, which you can then hose down and drain at home. Ah, so that like the old handy. X-Trail used yeah, yeah. to be. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Did you know yeah. you can fit a toilet in the back of a uh, BMW X5? Now I do. Yeah. yeah. What? I That's bought one from wonderful. Bunnings and I had to put a, a new toilet because I broke the last one. Well, what kind of toilet wouldn't fit in one? <laughs> you broke it. <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd I had our producer laughing that. It'd be some <laughs> kind of Japanese all singing, all dancing toilet <laughs> that wouldn't fit into an SUV. <laughs> no, I put, I put a whole whole toilet from, from nice. a Thanks well very known much for the update, hardware Richard. store. Fit in the back perfectly. Look, the other thing worth noting mm. is we've just run a news story saying that the Puma ST mm. uh, yeah. is a thing. And it'll be coming uh, to Australia. So as it's well. a hotter so high rider. It is. <laughs> uh, now, Wasa Exploring, W A S A Exploring. Water Exploring. Uh, Wasa, mm. W A S A, says uh, uh, yeah. it's rare for Mercedes to get something wrong. That's what I think uh, Steve, our good friend Steve Corby said last week. Uh, X class. Yeah. Talking right? about X class. Yep. Do you blokes have a clue what you're on about? <laughs> of course, yes. the answer is no. no. Oh, I'm no sorry. Idea. No. I mean, no idea. Uh, De Cook then called out. De Cook other, key. He then <laughs> called out other Merck failures beside the X Class, and mentioned that it was partly modest domestic demand uh, yeah. for the X Class. Yeah. No one in Germany they is willing to use. Utes. They don't want them. They don't right? want them. They and also the vans and things. I listened to the last episode. I think it was a huge marketing failure. They just yeah. went for the wrong people. Yeah. Uh, in enrolling Henry Rollins as your oh. your artsy spokesperson for the well heeled Ute buyer. Wrong yeah, mate. Spoken wrong. word. This was Aggressive. the the front man from. Black Flag, right, yeah. with all the integrity of the world, who never sold out, sold out big time. Mm. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, and also, uh, De Cook reckons you know modest added value relative to the Navara, and I think that's yeah. pretty obvious. Is De Cool K coming down soon? Because <laughs> very soon, is he staying at our one of our places? <laughs> I think he's staying with you, Richard. You're the yeah. one that's been in contact with him yep. via you, this podcast. Are you billeting him? No, we've got a we've got a we've got a mattress on the on the lounge room floor. It's for, Richard B and B. Yeah, yeah. R B and B. R B and B. Now uh, Rico says, "I'm glad to hear that the LDV T60 will be getting a new engine. This should fix the Achilles heel on that Ute. 
Speaking of SAIC, I do not understand why they're selling their products under two different brands, MG and LDV. Yeah. Their sales numbers would look a whole lot more impressive if they just focused on one. Now, we've been talking about this lately, about the, mm. the, the kind of spider's web of relationships between mm. different brands sitting under the umbrella mm -hmm. of overarching kind of companies and what have you. Yep. It is hard to unravel, but yes, uh, MG and I, I, LDV. I think the short answer is that LDV is part of Atiko Automotive, which is a different distributor to MG, which has its own presence in Australia. Right. And that's... The short answer. Short answer. Yeah, but okay. is it the extender going to basically be a, a T60? It's the exact same yeah. car as a T60. Yeah. yeah. The MG yeah. extender. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And okay. we'll get to the T60 in detail a little bit later on. <laughs> oh, okay. Fantastic. Top. Stay tuned. Now, uh, Dylan Green says, adding on to the Ute section of the podcast, oh. Isuzu have their somewhat outdated D-Max which is due to be replaced soon, but not soon enough. Mm. Have you guys heard when it's finally coming to Australia? Quarter four this year is the word that we've heard. Okay. Um, but, mm. but we actually had a, a contact um, from a dealership in Europe from Isuzu dealership in Europe asking us if we had any more information because he's no. so he's so interested in no what's coming. Way. He was like, really? yeah. Isuzu like, contacted us and asked us when uh, it's coming out. Uh, yes. <laughs> they were like, when's your review coming? Because we really want to know what you think of it yeah. and also what it features it has it's because there's not much outside of the Thai language barrier uh, yeah. that we know yet. I must say, without naming names or brands, I remember working at a magazine where we had a deep throat that fed us some information <laughs> from inside it was a local manufacturer, right? And we had all of a sudden plans a window out five years or more hence on what was coming. Amazing! We published a story, even put a center spread in the magazine of a chart showing when this car was going to arrive and when there's that. I remember going to the PR office of that company, and our chart was up on the wall. Oh. <laughs> How good! I just looked at going. Wow. Boy. It's good well, to know the if future. Only, if only these people knew. Get the crystal and, ball look, out. <laughs> everybody also knows that when that Isuzu comes out, there'll be a BT50 as well, which is pretty much going to be exactly the same yeah. car, isn't it? at the CX30 launch, I asked them about BT50, mm. and the answer was, we're not talking about that. Do you know what I heard? What did you hear? Mazda are doing nothing. Nothing. Really, it's all going to be Isuzu mm -hmm. with oh, just basically okay. a Mazda body on top. Mm. Interesting. That's all what right. I heard. Anyway. So it's kind of reversing the roles of what happened with Ford, Ford? and Mazda yeah. last yeah. time around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Time will tell. Mm. Now, uh, one Nando says the Y62, which uh, I think refers to a patrol, yes. tows just as well as a 200 series diesel. And the fuel economy is pretty much the same. Mm. The Australian mentality of needing a diesel to tow and go bush is ridiculous. People need to get with the times. The times being choose a petrol V8 yeah. instead of a diesel. I don't mm, think so, don't champ. Don't know. Um, yeah. the, the hybrid world will change the way we tow. Uh, totally. And you can watch uh, Mr. Kraft, Marcus Kraft's right. uh, towing comparison test between yep. the Land Cruiser and Patrol, which is probably what that's referring to. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We've had uh, quite a few comments from people hitting us up saying that we've done, we've given it to the wrong car and it's the wow. wrong win. And yeah. you know, uh, I... but then again. The 200 series is such an accomplished thing. Some How of could those it lose that test. Exactly. Some of those comments are harsh. Yeah. As well. There's a lot of passion out there. Oh, a lot of passion out there. Tell you what. Now, I wish there was that much passion about our podcast. Oh. Chap well, I mean, speaking there is. of passion on the podcast, Chapo's channel oh. has come at us with some fantastic feedback. Oh. G'day, guides. Um, gods. Did he call us gods? Yeah, that. Guides. Yeah, gods and gods. Gods. <laughs> gods. Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> had enough of diesel bashing in general. Yeah. Um, check the stats. I own an NP300 series three pushes, 196 grams per kilometre of CO2 on the urban cycle. Mm. Y62 Patrol, 486 grams mm -hmm. per kilometre on the urban cycle. Yeah. He also had some other uh, examples relating to the Kia Sportage mm. and what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I'd, be hate, I'd hate to be paying that fuel bill too. Premium unleaded, etc. Costs yeah. per kilometre, 1,000 kilometres. Two hundred and thirty-seven dollars. It's discounting the fact, though, that the diesel stuff that comes out the back of a car is a little bit worse for you than yeah. the petrol stuff. Which kills That's another you, part of the which discussion. Which kills you faster, <laughs> petrol <laughs> or diesel? Let's, now, well, I mean, it's a good question. It is a good question. I'm well, not going to find on out whether you're exposed to it via your lungs, or you're just purely ingesting. That's mm. right. I think I think that would take you out fairly rapidly. <laughs> I would either one. Not recommend either. <laughs> no. Yeah. Mm. Now, uh, Chapo continues on to say. Uh, new bit of tech I've been in is a 2653 Merc Prime Mover. Now, oh. Chapo's been in touch with us before, wow. and I know he's a mm. long-haul, we know he's a long-haul truck driver. Yep. Mm. So I did a bit of digging, and that is a 12.8-litre inline-six uh, Prime Mover, 
530 horsepower, 2,600 newton metres. And it's a stream space sleeper cab Ooh. and typically pitched for B-double type work. Yeah, okay. cool. So he says, uh, prototype development truck, tablets on the pillars and cameras on the wings. Yep. Wow. Any cars around the world you know running that type of equipment, AMG-style tablets for the dashboard and a separate one for switches and media in the middle. So amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, we, we we go on car launches and on car launches, there are people there who do truck launches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah. the... Uh, the developments which are going on in terms of autonomous uh, technology with trucks and, 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 and as you would know, are, are those, beyond cars. Those yeah. big mm. trucks are so cool. Yeah, the, the modern ones, those cab overs, they're so comfortable. Yeah, yeah, but even the platooning that they do where they yeah. can set up three or four trucks you know, in a line and just right. get them to follow each other. Amazing. Won't, uh, won't work yeah. in Australia, though, because truckies here sometimes are very bad at lane discipline. We're not talking about you, Chepo. Some, not, not, Chepo's not you, Chepo. Not Chepo. No, no, no. You're good. Have you been uh, tailgated on a, on a major freeway look, in Sydney? I, oh, I have. you've got to have massive sympathy, though, for heavy truck drivers mm, because, seriously, some people are just so silly yeah. um, in not understanding how much room they need and how much they, you know, space they need to pull yeah. up and all that basic stuff. Yep. It might have been Chepo that spoke to us about mm. when we were talking about lane discipline. Mm. Yep. And so they can't stay on the left because people are so yep. rubbish at merging yep. Yep. and not understanding closing speeds. I, I got the indicator the other night. So oh, to, to oh. overtake? No, no, but you know when a truck pulls in front of you or overtakes you, right? If you flash your headlights, and Chapa will know this, as all the truckies do it, you give them a high beam flash to let them know that you've cleared, they've cleared yep. you, yep. and they move in front, and then do the left, the right, and the left again just to yep. say... Thanks. Well, you Good were on. in a Scania Prime Mover when you were I doing was, that. I was. So bit... it's all amongst you know, That's truckies right. together. That's right. I was rubber ducky. Big now, Richard, they call him. That's right. Chapo yep. also says, on the Toyota thing, how do you think the 300 series, as in hybrid, will go in a deep water crossing? <laughs> <laughs> um, and we talked about that. Allegedly, mm-hmm. it would be you know waterproofed and all that kind of stuff. And he's pretty happy that his father-in-law is putting together a dual cab 79 series with all the trimmings, cool. apparently to pass on to Chapo huh? when his father-in-law departs this mortal coil. <laughs> so that's pretty special. That's um, kind of, um, it's yeah, kind of sad and happy. morbid. But he yeah. says he's ready to uh, crush the dreams huh. of the Ranger, i.e. Ranger, huh. and V-dub Hammer Rock. Now, when I read Hammer Rock... I thought it was Hammer I thought, ab- Absolutely. Yeah. I mm. thought, is that where Hammer Rocks gets his name? Is he, <gasps> does he drive out in Hammer Rock? Maybe he does. Anyway. It's um, a mystery. And he says, we'll my Hyundai know. story, as in Hyundai, 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 mm. Hyundai, uh, is before I owned my first 4x4, my Excel was my 4x4. <laughs> can't kill it. Can't kill it. Jim and I are the 90s. And then he says, <laughs> totally. Fair. Keep, then he says, keep up the good work. Absolutely. Oh, thanks. Um, thanks. So we will. that's all fantastic. All Thank you so much to everybody for giving us your thoughts. Now, the big news story this week mm. has been with Toyota. That's the sleeping giant that I referred to earlier. Not Richard. Not me. Although yes, he was tired. Although he I was, was he was on the floor I a while ago. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a seat, but it was a shadow. <laughs> it was, sh- it was to, thin air. It was just not a... Sp- yeah. uh, <laughs> so an, a badge that we all know well, Corolla, that mm-hmm. has in the past had serious performance behind it, fell into a, a kind of well of not so uh, yeah. performance. And yep. it's now coming back. Yeah. So we've, we've run that story this week. It follows on from the Yaris GR. Yep. And it seems as though the same engine, basically the same powertrain, a 1.6 litre triple turbo four-wheel drive will find its way into the Corolla. Yeah. Mm. And, well, if it's the same as the Yaris, it's going to be manual only. Yeah. Mm. Which is going to be a really interesting uh, consideration for a lot of people who are into the Corolla as a concept. Yes. Because basically the only ones they sell that are manual currently are the entry-level Base, base, base model ones, which aren't for the enthusiast. With a manual. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yep. So it's a bit of a price baiter, isn't it? Exactly. It's, it's to get a price out there. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, it's a really nice shift. It's got rev matching. It's quite an enjoyable car to drive because we know that that chassis is so well sorted. It the is. platform is brilliant. Uh, and I just think that maybe the manual and not having a, an auto as an option could mm. be an issue for it. But as we've seen with the Yaris GR, yep. there's going to be an all show no go version of the Aris in Japan. We saw it, uh, there was revealed at Tokyo Auto Salon. We've got a story on it on the site. Yep. And it's going to have the 1.5 litre uh, non turbocharged oh, traditional really? four cylinder engine. But the big body but bulges. With and... a CVT 
and with about 80 kilowatts. Oh, no. um, so but it, it looks tough. It looks it's tough. It's got the look. Oh, and I mean, is that mm. is that an issue? That's the thing I want to know. I think there are a lot of people out there who would think that already the Corolla looks really sporty. Yeah. As a hatchback, it does. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and adding extra sporty sportness to it will be <laughs> will be just awesome. That's an option box. Sporty sportness. That, you can tick that. I want extra sporty sportness. <laughs> yeah. I um I've got um I've got something controversial to say. Oh no! I I uh, yeah, believe it or not, I, I think this has just come too late. Um, I right. think Toyota should have uh, released this car about five years ago. Mm. I think everybody yeah. else is moving to electric hybrid drivetrains now. Um, I love it. I love petrol. Uh, you know, I got a V eight tattoo on my arm, but I really think that this is you know. It just, was just, tattooed with petrol. It as was well, tattooed with heard petrol. At the time, I remember exactly you telling me. Right. Yeah, especially yeah. the especially the P. <laughs> um, <laughs> circles are hard. Um, no, I just look. I love it. I love the sound of it. That, this, you know, the three cylinder engine that yep. makes what is it, two hundred kilowatts? Yep. Crazy. Yeah, it is two seventy newton Two hundred kilowatts, three seventy newton meters. Yeah, this needed to come out two thousand and thirteen. Yeah, and I really think it's just a, like Volkswagen are now moving to electric vehicles. It's just too late. Could mm. it be a case though of zigging while everyone else is zagging? Like, yeah. If you hang around long enough and stick with it, you're the last one standing. Yeah. And, and the people who really are turned on by it, smaller group, yeah. go for it. I guess so. I mean, look at i30N. I don't think, to me, that has performed as well as Hyundai probably would have wanted it to. Mm. I think regular i30s, the n line sell really, really well. Yep. Um, the Halo models, models like the i30N, has it, even though it's an awesome car, and but, I'm no doubt this Corolla is going to be awesome as well. And that's the thing, you know, what's holding the i30N back? No auto transmission. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. what's going to stop it. That's in, right. in Australia, we do have this mad uh, love of the auto transmission. Yeah. I I think that obviously the manual is going to be the better driver's car, generally speaking. Definitely. Um, but this, I, I just think that this Corolla hatch is going to be something different. Obviously, that engine is the same one they're using in the Yaris GR yep. and looks like they're also going to use in a CHR GR, wow. um, which we've written a story about as well. Right. Mm. Um, and it's it's a fantastic engine and the point of it is that it's been derived from their rally program and that's where they're trying to get this, you know, we're, we're a fun brand, we're exciting, we're what you want to be mm. when you grow up. So <laughs> I'm glad this is happening. I'm glad we are the, the the final days of combustion engines are going out with a bang and not <laughs> a literal a bang. Going out with a bang. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. Apparently, the all-wheel drive system is going to be an adapted version of the Ravs um, all-wheel drive system. Yeah. So that makes Brilliant. sense. All-wheel drive on that little short wheelbase. Both on the oh, TNGA, you know, yeah. top yep. of platform. It all starts to make sense. But that's a fair point. Yeah. It, maybe they've just missed the boat. I it's just look. Late. I love it. I love it. I love it. But just hearing that story from Auto Express in the UK, a fantastic public motor, motoring publication, I just, um, I just think it's just, it's just too late. Yeah, too late. My my big yeah. question is, it's 2023. They're saying that it's going to come out. That's mm. a long, long time into the yeah. current generation Corolla's life cycle. Like yeah. that's at the end. That's right. right. And same with the CHR GR. That's like a year past the end of it. So well, maybe, maybe it's a new generation car that we don't know about. Maybe yet. they just thought of it yesterday. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> and, you know, they, that's just how long it takes. Yeah. So 2023, so we'll probably see it in uh, at Tokyo Motor Show, 2023. Um, and then we won't get it until 2024. Yeah, that's so right. So it'll be mid-20, mid you know, it'll be 2025. Yeah. By then you're ten years off not being able to drive petrol cars in <laughs> the in UK. Some point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. I just think this car should have come out in 2012, gone head to head with the new generation Golf GTI, mm-hmm. uh, and I think the same for i30N. And what about the price? Because we know that um, our our own Manchester has done the <laughs> sums on the Japanese market uh, Yaris GR at around. Almost fifty thousand dollars. Yes. This is going to be a sixty to seventy thousand dollars. Can you car. imagine paying seventy grand for a Corolla? No, no way. No. Has anyone ever? Uh, oh. Great question. Maybe they have, like an X Rally car, might be an, an X race car, or who knows. But yeah, that is the thing. If you're going to spend seventy thousand dollars on a car, I don't think it's going to be. You'd be buying a Supra. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously this is all speculative. <laughs> yeah, of course but, it is. Yeah, but you know. Yes. But we've had the person who was running the uh, Yaris GR program saying it would just be silly not to have this engine and powertrain yeah. going into other cars. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems highly likely. Yeah. And the story seems to be pretty well sourced. Um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I I'm like looking forward to it too. It's going like to be cool. It's going to be good, but it's not going to work. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It's just, it's, just it's, it's, it's great. So what do they do if they, if they can't get an auto for it? What happens? It's not going to sell. 
You reckon? No, it won't sell. Um, the, pip, the people who will buy it will buy it, and then that'll be it. Mm. Mm. That's sad. It'll, it'll just sad. move to the back of the forecourt, you know, and it'll probably just be there gathering dust. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have one in a shot. It. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. But it's not going to, it's going to be, they're going to be making their money out of Rav Falls and regular Corollas. Well, we want to hear from everybody listening yeah. and watching us and tell us what you think in yeah, terms of sure. how that stacks up as a proposition. Yes, it's probably going to be expensive. That's well, the other part of it. The, the thing about this as well, there's a psychology behind it. So car brands need halo models mm-hmm. and that sells the lesser models. It gets people in and yeah. um, and then it gets people interested. Yeah. And Toyota has been missing halo models from its lineup for, for a while. Yeah. And now it finally does. And it's got this really cool, useful, you know, gazoo racing brand. And it's it's the shot in the arm that, that Toyota has needed for a long time. Yeah. yeah. And even if it is too late, it's better late than never, I guess. It's a lot like when British Leyland in Australia had the Austin Tasman and Kimberley. They were the whole, you know, the halo yep. uh, models over the P76 that just cast a really nice luster onto that. Oh, <laughs> even the Winton Turbo. I <laughs> went back to that too. Oh. Remember Winton? Oh, oh. No, I do. The great old days of Aussie manufacturing. The times we've had in that car, oh, all those cars. Geez, yeah. I was conceived in the back of a Winton. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, <laughs> speaking of cars that we've been in, um, we are going to move to our garage, <laughs> yeah. and Richard, we're going to start yes. with you, mm. and give us the rundown on an Equinox, Ooh, so a Holden uh, Equinox. Uh, look, yeah? I'm sure a lot of uh, sort of a lot of people have been conceived in the back of an Equinox as well, uh, uh, because there's a lot of room in those back seats. Uh, I've been driving a Holden Equinox LTZV. It's the top of the range Equinox. Costs about forty six grand, forty six thousand two hundred and sixty nine. <laughs> I think I can't remember totally. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, I did notice some impressions in the headliner. I, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, yeah, the Titanic thing with the hands oh, yeah, going down the window. Yes. Um, look, it's 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 a car which I, I, I it gets a, it's got a bad rap, okay? It's not selling particularly well, um, and, and it's, that's, it's, it's, that's not deserved. It's actually a lot better than uh, I think people might think it is. Um, it's okay. So the value for money is fantastic. So this top of the range um, model comes with, uh, you know, heated and ventilated front seats. It comes with sat nav. It comes with Apple CarPlay. It comes with a big screen, an eight-inch screen. Um, it, there's really nothing missing on this car. Leather seats. It, the 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 build quality is is it's an American car. So it's a Chevy in mm. in you know where it comes from. Actually, it was built in Mexico. Mexico. Um, yeah. Built in Mexico, but you know it's, it's a Chevy Equinox. Really. Trump is so happy about that. Uh, very much so. Um, <laughs> Look, it's 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 different to other midsize SUVs in that it's longer than most SUVs, midsize SUVs. It's mm. longer than a CX-5. It's longer than a Tucson, but it's narrower than those cars. Really? It's the canal boat of <laughs> midsize SUVs. It's skinny and long. So that's good for me because I live in places where there are laneways and there's... And you know, great for parking spots. Very good. All that. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's actually... Yeah. It, believe it or not, it's almost like the, the SUV has evolved to suit the city. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Comfortable seats, big windows, vibrating seats. Oh, yeah, yeah so that's that, weird. That's the thing. We're, we're making I a video. Them. I've made. Do you, yeah, I love them. Okay, I don't like it. Maybe um, that's. I'm not saying I love them in that way, but I do love the feeling. I mean, not the feeling. <laughs> I love that it's a different. Uh, it's another way of way of understanding your. Yeah. You've bought a safety. couple from the spare parts <laughs> place at the Holden dealer. You got them in your lounge room. My my office chair is a. Is it Holden Equinox? vibrating seat. It's plugged in. Look, if people Damn. don't know what the hell we're talking about, basically the Equinox has got these seats, and they're also in the Arcadia as well, uh, where it's got front and rear parking sensors, and you can either have them let you know if you're too close to something, either by an audible beep, or you can switch the beep off uh, and get a vibration through the seat instead. And it comes through both your bum cheeks, and it's just, <laughs> it is, it's quite Buzzy, it's yeah. quite. It's quite it's what well, as opposed to cheaper versions that just come through one bunch. <laughs> it's quite like seriously, it is. You wouldn't want to be going needing to go to the loop. No, oh, no you wouldn't. That's the last thing you'd need. Um, and what happens is, is that if you're if you pull up at like a traffic lights, and this happens every single day on the way to work, and I and I'm try, I haven't worked out how to turn the sound of the beeps on, so it's still on buzz. And when people walk too close to the car, each person that walks past, it goes. <laughs> 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 now that's you just making <laughs> yeah. that noise. There's nothing to do with the seat. So look, tootin'. apart from the seats and apart from the looks, it's not a not the prettiest car in the in the car park. Um, but it's really good value. Uh, it's got 188 kilowatts out of its two liter four cylinder yeah. engine. It's pretty grunty. But my um, question is, the mm. Equinox. We know that there's a facelift coming. There is. That's going to make it so hard to sell the current one because the current one is. 
how do we say it politely? It's not appealing to look at. Mm-hmm. No, you may have had an interlude with the ugly stick. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it hurts your eyes. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's it's not conventional uh, modern day SUV styling. No. And it defi- definitely does appeal in the US market where yes. it sells really, really well, yeah. but it doesn't quite translate to the Australian tastes yep. quite as well. As Isn't it could. the best selling car in Michigan? Yeah. There you go. I mean, Michigan, it's cold. <laughs> oh, and I do <laughs> I mean, a demonstration in my video where I demonstrate the difference, the point of all wheel drive on a really steep, slippery hill. Okay. Cool. Mm. Fantastic. So watch it. And just, sorry, remind mm. me, Richard, the name of that top spec model. What's the variant called? Uh, okay. It's the LTZV. LTZV. Yeah. Okay, mm. that's easy mm. to remember. Mm. What is it again? L- <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, um, M4, we're yeah. going to move on to you. And it's yeah. these words have been flying around the office all week because oh. it's just hard to resist them. Tell us what you've been in. The LDV T60 Megatub. 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 <laughs> so the Megatub is a... It's not a hot tub. No? No. Well, it could be. It could be. I mean, you could line it with a nice... Lighting. Yeah, or Ooh. lighting. Lighting. I thinking about lighting. How many people yeah, would you get in the back of it? I reckon you could fit 20. No. It is a big tub. Really? It is huge. 20? Yeah. Can 20. it transport you through time? It's... I don't think so. Um, I didn't try. Yeah. But maybe. Hot tub time machine. Hot tub it's time got, machine. Yeah. It has, at the top of the tray, there is 1.8 metres of length from top Which wall, end to end. Heaps. What? That is it. 1.8. It's yeah. 1.5 wide. Yeah. Remember, it's 1.8 long on both sides of the tray. And yes. it's half a metre deep. Yep. Yeah. You could fit 20 people in there. They wouldn't be comfortable. Unreal. They'd want to be friendly. Maybe yes. they'd be too yeah. friendly. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah. It reminds me of those guys that made a laser watertight and then filled it with water. Did you see that? Where they were, oh, Ford laser. <laughs> Ford yes. laser yeah. Yeah. Dri- yeah. driving around. It was like a fish tank. Yeah. Oh, with water anyway. in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They oh. filled it up with water. Yeah. And they, I think they had breathing equipment on it. <laughs> That's just silly. Anyway, sorry. I didn't do that with the Megatub, but I did put 750 kilos in the back of it yep. uh, to do a load test. Mm. And... Um, I guess if you need extra length to the tub, that's where it all is. It's all rear of the cab. So you get an, a longer wheelbase and a much longer tub as a result. It doesn't impact the cabin space at all. The cabin is still really, really spacious for that market segment. Um, the, the ute itself is something like 5,680 millimetres long. It it's is a, a big, big thing. long truck. Yeah. Um, and that's going to factor into whether you can park it, whether it works for you in your garage, whatever. You need to make mm. up that decision. Make sure you, if you do decide mm. to test drive one and you've got a small garage, then maybe it's going to get parked advice, outside. try a three-point turn. Yeah. 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 Because that, that oh. uh, wheelbase means it's... Yeah. yeah. And fun, funnily enough, according to LDV's spec sheet, the wheelbase between the regular dual cab and the Megatub long wheelbase version is exactly the same, 12.6 metres for the turning circle, Okay, which isn't the biggest in the ute segment, but no. it's still a bloody handful. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's a big truck. But it really addresses that thing, doesn't it? The popularity of dual cab utes. It's all very good. It's all practical. You can put the family in, but then the tub... Yeah, it's pretty tiny. Yeah, you know, well, if you want to use it as a ute, yep. you're limited. So exactly. stretching it out the back, okay, and answers that question. We've seen this is a sort of emerging segment of the market because we've got the Sangyong Musso XLV, which is the closest oh, rival yes. to this one. Yep. Um, it starts a little bit cheaper than the LDV, but ends a little bit more expensive. It's up near forty three grand for the top spec, um, and the LDV, the Megatub's only available um, with a manual or auto transmission. You're paying if you're an ABN holder, you're paying thirty five grand drive away or thirty seven wow. grand drive away. So yep. that's a, a lot big of truck, a lot of money. Ute for yeah. your money, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got. Leatherish seats. It's got leatherish. a ten-inch touchscreen that works sometimes. Yeah. Um, Wild herds of leatherishes. Yes, <laughs> yes. To give up their but their hide. I've yeah. got to say, I did the load test. I was, you know, I liked bits of it. I liked some elements of it without the load. I didn't like some elements of it. You'll have to read my review and watch my video to see all the details. But um, I was actually kind of surprised. I thought it was quite a novel approach for that uh, part of the market. And to be able to offer that much ute for that little money is really impressive. It is, I've Mm. got to say, fairly loud. It Uh, is loud. That's one thing I did notice, that um, all it takes Mm. is a mere squeeze of the throttle and you are in a world of decibels. It is much, much louder at below 30 k's an hour ish. Okay. So once you get a bit higher in the in the sort of rev range and up the ratios a little bit, it's it's not too bad. Smooth out. But okay. yeah, it does grumble a bit at low speeds. So JC, what have you been in? I have been in an Audi, yeah. and it's a Q3. Mm. So it's a 35 TFSI. 
So new model, mm -hmm. and it's the launch edition, yep. which means you're getting extra fruit added mm -hmm. into the whole package. Bananas? Yeah, you get uh, grapes, bananas, grapes. the oh. mangoes, the whole Ooh. bit. It comes complimentary with the car. A fruit no, basket? That's, yeah. that's a lie. Yeah. And <laughs> so, no, it's things like 19-inch alloys. You get uh, paint, privacy glass. The list goes on. It's 100 odd, uh, 110 kilowatts, 250 newton meters. It's a front-wheel drive only, mm -hmm. so no Quattro this time around. Six-speed dual-clutch uh, dual auto. Yep. Uh, and I found it. As, as I like the Q3, I'll put yeah. my hand up to liking the Q3. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really neat package. I think it's a really good size for the city. And this one with this launch edition pack just reeks of quality. Yeah. And the attention to detail with these SUVs from Audi is really impressive. Um, I thought it was um, the ride was pretty good for such a short wheelbase. Yeah. It, yeah. it was pretty comfy. But the price is $52,750. Yeah. You've crested fifty grand uh, for a city-sized yeah. SUV. Yeah. So you've really got to be up for that. Um, yeah. And if you're in that market, if you're into the premium SUV, but you only want a small one, yeah, yeah. spot on. I think that Q3 is leading the way out of the, the woods, I think, for Audi as well. That new design, for, for years yeah. and years and years, they've gone down the cookie-cutter route, and they all their cars look the same. Yeah. And I think their Q3 is the way out. And, yeah. and we've seen that with Q8 and, yeah. and a few other things as well. So, Cur yeah. Currently yeah. in the office, we've got uh, another Q3, mm -hmm. uh, which is the same spec, 35 TFSI, but not the launch edition. Uh -huh. Sadly, it's optioned up to almost to the, the same, same price, oh, I see. Um, and it's a forty-six thousand ish dollar proposition. So it's it's much more approachable right. at that level, I think. Um, but also, we've got the Q2 in the yes. office, which is the very slightly smaller mm. um, small SUV from Audi, yep. which has been around for a few years now. Yep. Um, we've actually seen quite a spike in people looking for the Q2 reviews ah. mm. uh, because the Q3 has been missing for about 12 months. Yep. Yes. And so they've been thinking, well, which Audi small SUV can I get? Mm. We've got them both at the same time and it's really quite interesting seeing them next to each other. Um, we might post some stuff next week because we're doing something a little bit secret uh, comparison-wise um, with the Q3. Right. Mm. So Plus there are other secret things that Mr. Pritchard's doing next week that we we true. definitely can't go into. No, we can't. There are secret yeah. things he's doing right now. Now, oh, yeah. That oh, wink told a big story. That's awkward. Good anyway. Anyway. <laughs> me. Is that going to is that going to come off? Oh. Oh. That's terrible. Anyway, um, um, so yeah, the yep. uh, Q3, mm. good good little thing. I think yeah, so I think far. so. I think so. And White wheels on the on the, Q, the Q2 on, on the Q2 that mm. we've got. You'll see that soon. White wheels. And, uh, I mean, when you think about, mm. so I suppose Q3 is uh, CLA. Yeah. GLA. G G sorry, beg your pardon. Yep. GLA. Yep. Um, and X1? Or would kind that be, of. be an X2, uh, um, a Q2 competitor? Um, it's a little bit of a grey so area in there. I isn't think it? X1 is kind of a weird bod. It like is. it doesn't quite fit against them because it's got a boxier body. Like, yeah, true. I remember. Years ago, at a different place that I worked, I did a X1 versus oh, Forrester. That was because, a takeaway. Job. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. X1 versus Forester. Yeah. They had not X1, X1 versus XV. They had no. an X1 yeah. delivery van and a Forester delivery van. <laughs> There's a pizza, <laughs> pizza shop. shop. Yeah. yeah. That's an interesting. Anyway, but comparo. the um yeah. the yeah I think X1 doesn't quite fit against it. The GLA is at the end of its life. There's a new one coming soon. Mm. Um, and so yeah, you've got the likes of Q3. You've got the likes of Volvo XC40, which we all have driven and really appreciate that Love car. It. Yep. So I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next week in our sure secret test. Sure, will be. Can secret I'm, I'm, test. I'm making another prediction. You know how we make predictions each week. Yep. The death of cars. So <laughs> like not cars in general. Like that'd be terrible. I'd be out of a job. Right. That's not a prediction. There will still be cars. But I'm predicting everything's just going to go SUV. We're going to okay. lose sedans and saloons. Right. Yep. So all the hatches and sedans. They're and all going to go. They go to the crusher. They're going to go to the crusher. There's some kind of government edict yep. that just says yep. drive your car. It's just going to gonna be SUVs. Right. And eventually they're going to morph into like an egg. You heard it here first. <laughs> Very aerodynamically yeah, efficient, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. Now, speaking XUV. of um, aerodynamic efficiency, it's time for Musk Watch. <laughs> right. Now, okay, now on the Twitters, this is where Elon is really in his element. This yeah. is where I think you find the real Elon. So that's mm. where we've been fishing it's for. It's a scary place. Oh, oh, oh. Really? So alone. this week he tweeted, quote, my mom wrote mm. a book uh, with a picture, a 1995 pic, because it's got the timestamp in, in the corner of the image, of Elon and his mother, Mae Musk. Yeah. So the book 
notes. This, the, the book that he's talking about, of course, is one that his mother has written, um, and it's called A Woman Makes a Plan. All right? A Woman Makes a Plan. Okay. It's all of and it. the, the, here are the notes from the book. Here are the notes, the descriptive on notes on the author. May Musk is a fashionable, charming, jet-setting supermodel with a fascinating and tight-knit circle of family and friends and is 71 years old. As everyone who follows her obsessively on social media knows, May is a font of frank and practical advice on how the choices you make in every decade can pay off in surprising, exciting ways throughout your life. Oh, God. So once you get through that lot, and there was some feedback... Ram Lover 69 came back and said, it's not as good as reading my Dodge Rams owner's manual, <laughs> which was one in the eye well, for the dear leader. That's a good one. Well, but it did, it. it did open up this whole topic of mm. May Musk. And mm. I know in times past, Richard has professed a certain liking uh, She's for, a this beautiful per- woman. for this person. So her hashtags yes. on her Twitter handle are hashtag dietitian, hashtag IMG models, hashtag oh. cover girl, Hashtag author. <laughs> so she's got a lot going on. She has actually, I would argue, an otherworldly kind yes. of vibe. Yes, I she think does. she's got that kind of aura she's a bit that says, I'm not of this world. Mm. Like oh. her son. Yeah. So look, well, connect, the dot, yes. connect the dots here. What about um, the other son? Oh, uh, we'll get to them. Colin, we'll get to them. Matthew Mahoney. We'll get to them. <laughs> not, not, he looks like him. So on Twitter, she said, Right, I'm ready to drive the cyber truck to the launch pad for my trip to Mars. Hashtag fashion first, right? And she said this would be the perfect outfit for taking the Cybertruck for a spin and people on YouTube will be able to see what I'm talking about. And it is just the most, in my view, pretentious and horrendous. It looks like something out of, um, for anyone old enough, Lost in Space. Mm. When they were going to do a lift-off, they wore yeah. the very funky silver suits. Yeah. And uh, it's got that kind of look to it. And then there was another picture that Elon posted that said, when your mom finally lets you yeah. sit up front on the way to school. And it's him in the passenger seat yeah. of the Cybertruck. Oh, God. So I think there are some mummy issues here. Yeah. Uh, we've got some kind of eatable comp- eatable, Death. Oedipus complex Oedipus going Rex. on. Yep. Uh, so wow. May Musk says, here's some other just classic snippets from her Twitter. Yep. I'm so excited to be speaking at PassionCon. What's that? Blowed if I know, mate. <laughs> about my book, A Woman Makes a Plan. Thanks, Passion Flicks or Passion Life, Passion Plus, for inviting me. So she's she's going to Passion Con. They're all full of it, the Musks, aren't they? they? Are, right. And then <laughs> she says, right, this is a this is an out of the blue post. Right. Hospital internship and Master of Science degree in dietetics while running a modelling school for students. Hashtag something or other, hashtag Bloomfontein. Uh, so this is when they're in Africa. What? She's just without any ado. Who cares? She's just blowing her own horn about Jeez. how good she is. And then Germano says, "You are amazing, May. Now I know where Elon, Kimball, and Tosca learned to be like this." Oh, it's, <laughs> that's their kids' names: Tos- Elon, Kimball, and Tosca. I'm Kim- almost ready to check out of Musk Watch. Oh, uh, Kimball, Kimball wears the hat. This is he? a bit he wears much. The cowboy I just hat. want to throw up. This oh, I find all much. of that disgusting. really bad. Anyway, it's disgusting. Look, speaking of throwing up, on the <laughs> Joe Rogan Experience yes. podcast, Richard, you sent me this, and it's really, I, uh, really illuminating. Mm. A guy called Garrett Reisman, who's an ex-NASA astronaut, yeah. left NASA for SpaceX mm-hmm. and worked on the program with Elon, reporting, I think, directly yep. to Elon yep. for seven years. And there's a video online of the podcast that Joe Rogan does of this discussion. It's a really good one. Mm. And one of the things that Reisman said that caught my ear was everything that Elon does is viewed through the prism of how is this going to get us to Mars? Yeah. So from a SpaceX point of view, that's right. everything we're doing is about getting us to Mars. Yeah. So every tweet he does is about getting to Mars? Well, look, this is, I think, probably in the orbit, pardon the pun, of oh. SpaceX. Yeah? Oh, okay, so, sorry. So more to do with SpaceX. It's a really interesting interview. I've, I'm currently listening to the whole podcast right now between Garrett Reisman and, and, and Joe Rogan. Garrett Reisman is... is an is the most awesome 
astronaut I've ever heard speak. He's because great, isn't he? He's yeah. so he's so he's from New Jersey, right? And yeah. he's just he's not as you would imagine a, a, an astronaut to be. You'd expect astronauts to be tall and you know. You strapping. Just pointed to Mr. Pritchard <laughs> when you were talking about astronauts. This is what we expect them <laughs> well, to be. We know that he's been. It is in his background. The the space 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 station. He did wear that astronaut suit that suit time. Yeah. Yeah. the yeah. one without the bo- the back of the the <laughs> the, the, the backside astronaut <laughs> suit. Yes, and he told us it's they all wear them in space because it helps going to the toilet. But it wasn't well, about that. Gravity the is the issue. Anyway, it's about you putting toilets. Talking, in cars talking and of toilets, if God. you haven't checked out, and I know we're giving the Jay Rogan podcast so I'll experience a, a yeah, plug again. Good on him. But um, the Ricefin interview is fantastic. He talks about going to the toilet under the ocean, um, wow. and and just his background and, and the experiences that he's had on um, on the space station are brilliant. He talks about when he sees the um, the Earth for the first time because Jay Rogan says when you see it for the first time. A lot of astronauts well up and they burst into tears because they're overcome by the emotion. And he said, what did, you, what did you feel? And he goes, well, you know, when you're working on a space station, there's a lot to do. So you get up there and you're really, really busy. And you think, if I really should look out that window, but, you know, you, you, you got stuff to do. And at one point I saw this blue haze coming through the window and I thought, that's got to be the Earth, right? So he, he said, I, so I, I prepared myself and I closed my eyes and I meditated for a while. And then I opened my eyes and looked out the window and I saw it. And Joe's like, and what did you feel? And he goes, I thought, meh. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes. What do you mean? He goes. Oh, you see the Earth all the time in pictures. It looks exactly it's like that. Yeah, right. It's a re- it's a really down to earth guy. It's a great interview. He's, he's quite pump, charismatic, pump. isn't he? But the point where that interview changes is when he start talking about Elon Musk. Yeah. So he goes from being this really self assured astronaut who knows the answer to everything because he's a scientist by trade, but then when he gets talking about Elon Musk, you can tell he gets a bit nervous, mm. and he starts getting that yeah. the cult thing come over his eyes a little bit. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's weird. I was disappointed because he went from being this guy who was this tough astronaut, down to earth guy, and then talks about his, his SpaceX time because he's working on the Dragon module, and he yeah because there was one there was one anecdote loses. he came up with yeah which was where they were at a NASA meeting mm. and he compared yeah. Elon to how it Hughes. Right, right. Yeah. and then thought later, hmm, maybe yeah. that's not a good comparison because in his later years, Howard had some issues and kind of sailed downhill in yeah. various parts yeah. of his life. Mm. Uh, and so later on, it was a good few months later, mm. they were in a car going somewhere, just the two of them, and he said, you know, hey boss, um, about that time I compared you to Howard Hughes, I meant the young Howard Hughes going out with starlets, making that, movies yes. kind of Howard yeah. Hughes, not the older guy with the long fingernails and the germaphobe and, and whatever. Um, and so... He just got silence. Yes. Right. And Elon kind yeah. of pondered it and he said, that's yeah. not uncommon, that he really churns over yeah. what's been saying. Yeah. And he said, look, I didn't think it was an apt comparison. Yeah. He finally said that. Yeah. And he goes, oh, okay, yeah. why not? And he said, because none of Howard Hughes's developments change the way we live our that's lives. Right. Yeah. So he's, you know, the spruce goose, amazing, yeah. but it didn't go anywhere. We, we fly, we don't fly on wooden planes. Other high yep. speed planes, yep. you know, yep. no, nah, it was all very fancy, yeah. but didn't move us forward that's right so that's what Elon's thinking about I mean te- that's testimony to what Elon does like he, I do genuinely believe that he thinks he's helping the human race yeah um, and everything he does is geared towards that it's better than a you know a you know, a Zuckerberg or a Bezos or something like that. I think I do think Elon's heart is in the right place. I also think he's you know is, a bit loopy. is um is the Zuckerberg guy related to Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Very uh, closely related. Anyway, Oops. we'll we'll have a look at the sh- the share mm. price for Tesla because yep. we always do seven hundred and sixty seven dollars twenty nine and was seven forty eight or nearly seven forty nine last time. So okay. It reached a high of eight hundred dollars on mm. Monday. I've got a question about yeah. This is not. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Is there any update on the Grimes baby? Oh yeah. No, I'll take that on notice. Okay. I'll give her a shout. <laughs> I'll um. I'll get in Twitter. touch and find out how she's going. <laughs> okay, good. Last I time it. I spoke to her, there was a bit of morning sickness. <laughs> yeah. awkward, but um, I'll check in. Um, now the Nasdaq page, as in the Nasdaq website. Yeah. Sean Williams, being the author has said Tesla is partying like it's 1999 and it's not going to end well. Oh. And that's a reference back to the tech stock bubble uh, pre-2000. Mm-hmm. And he's saying that this rapid expansion of the Tesla share price is similar and that it has got to pop. He's saying it, it is unsustainable wow. um, as a share price. So that's NASDAQ itself saying that. Tesla's stock hits ludicrous speed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, why the monumental rally, you ask? Honestly, Wall Street doesn't even know the answer. Right, so they're wow. in that mode where, yeah, why is this happening? I don't know. Get on board. It's uh, just happening. You know? That's scary. Update with the Grimes baby. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow, that Brilliant. was quick. USA Today Was has... that a text you sent her? You <laughs> just... Oh, no, it's USA, <laughs> USA Today. 
<laughs> no, she knew we were talking about it. She texted, right. she texted you. Totally, she texted me. She's tuned in. Now. Um, the whole thing has been a bit of an ordeal, she says to me in a uh. text. Um, <laughs> had some complications early on, a decent second trimester, but starting to hurt everywhere at 25 weeks. Right. What were your all experience with this stuff? I'll any get back any to it later. outright call on the paternity of this uh, of this baby? Uh, I, not I think it's sure fairly clear. yet. Not sure. She's she's having trouble coping with uh, with working and also having a baby. Fine. And well, she she's feels... not alone there. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a tough life. And I mean... look, and with that, we have reached the finish line. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thank you, Richard. Thank you. And thanks to our very own podfather, <laughs> Mr. Pritchard, for making a podcast you can't refuse. Yeah. He's in the feather-trimmed denim flares and a puffy pirate shirt. Hello. Yes. It's an amazing combo. He, oh, he was in a puffy pirate shirt over the oh, over yeah. the course of this yes. event. Things He's have known changed. to do a strip tease. Or like a corset in to me. The, uh, the shed. Very, yeah. I'm please, trying not to look. Please pass it's on addictive. the word about the podcast and let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast mm. or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. And thanks to those that are doing exactly that. If you're an iTunes listener, please rate and review us. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube. Yeah. But before we go, a mate of mine lives in the bush and was driving home from town Is a few nights crafty? ago. Looked in his rear view mirror and saw an ambulance with its lights on. So he pulled over and as the ambulance passed... It hit a rough patch on the verge. The back door opened slightly and a small container fell out. Oh. He pulled up and soon found what turned out to be a foam box. Inside was a human toe <gasps> in ice. Is this true? He knew he wouldn't be able to catch the ambulance and, of course, his mobile was dead. Mm. So he rushed to the nearest servo to call triple zero. Ambos told him to stay put and they'd send someone to pick it up immediately. Ended up waiting 20 minutes for a tow truck. Uh... <laughs> Oh, uh, because it's the toe. <laughs> what? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the dad jokes just keep on um, coming. About these jokes, Macal. Did you make? Did you make that up? Or was that actually something that happened? It actually happened. How about those swans, eh? Did he get his toe back on? <laughs> I'll check. Oh.